Good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to run your plumbing system for your aquaponics. Um, it's pretty basic really. Just a bit of trial and error and uh, t you know it took us about six months to find the final the final plumbing situation but uh, working well now and tried and true. So today we're in the greenhouse and it is a bit windy outside there right now so I hope you guys can hear through all the uh, wind noise and such. Alright let's get to all it. Alright guys we will start with the fish tank here and you can see all the lovely fish down there and right there is where we're going to start. That's the outlet uh, valve for the IVC. I've got a, uh, a basic insert there with a mesh screen to stop any uh, fish from escaping the tank. Shouldn't be too bad now because the fish are, you know, a much bigger size. But anyhow, I keep it there. And it goes down here through the main valve of the IBC tank into a sweeping 90, which goes directly into the radio flow filter, which we come up here. There is the input for the radio flow filter from the tank. And you can see, got a good flow going on here. And uh, if anyone's curious, I do have calculations on how to size your radio flow filter and all the flow rates and retention times that are, you know, ideally required for this. Because you don't want to put too much water flow through your radio flow filter. As essentially this will, it, it, if the retention time is too low, uh, say 30 seconds or less or 45 seconds, it's just going to not give the solids enough time to gradually sink down to the bottom of the tank before it's run out the outlet. And I'll just remove the lid here and show you the basic system of it. There's the outlet from the fish tank again. And right there on the top one, on the top one right here, that's the outlet that runs to our system. This outlet there, that is a runoff outlet that I can drain off the clean water and put it back into the sump tank through this line with a valve. It's a inch and a half line, 40 uh, millimeter, uh, runs here and directly into the sump tank. And while I'm here, I've got a fill line that through a valve runs up to our roof top and that's a 500 liter tank aerated and chlorine free so that I can uh, top up the system anytime I need which runs directly into the uh, sump tank there. Alright, we'll get back to the radio flow. Inlet from the fish tank, solid sink to the bottom, all the clean water escapes through the outlet here, through a sweeping 90, run across run across the wall here in another sweeping 90 and directly into the uh, DWC or floating raft bed and I've just got some new stuff started here nothing really sprouting other than maybe a little bit of basil I think in there um, uh, got a couple beetroots and here's the outlet for a sweeping 90 and a T that runs into the grow beds, obviously balanced with a valve, runs down. Whoops, should put that away, I guess. Sorry about that. Runs directly into the second grow bed, balanced with a valve, of course. And we'll run across here. See the peppers are at the end of the season here. And into a flood and drain bell, bell siphon and you can see actually that one is just starting I'm not sure if we can see from this bed no we can't see it oh there it is but it's just starting anyhow so that's how it goes back to the tank been running these bell siphons now for over a year haven't had one issue whatsoever with them they are fantastic. I've got them nailed down perfectly. 
Here's the other one for bed one. The top, nice little handle pulled up. And you should be able to see in there, it's filling up. And the, uh, the guard around to stop any roots and uh, the media from flowing through the system. Back again. A little top to keep any leaves and debris off. And we'll just run back to the other side. This is our third bed, which we had as a media bed as well. But I'm undecided uh, if I'm going to put it back to another media bed or if we're going to uh, change up the bed and do uh, maybe a wicking bed or something like that here. Because uh, there are some things like sweet potatoes and carrots that they're quite difficult to grow in the standard uh, aquaponics media bed flood and drain, whatnot. Um, all right, now that we've gone through input to the grow bed, output for the grow bed through flood and drain, which goes, let's see if you can see it down there. Yeah, there's, there's one there that's draining off from bed two. I showed you on the other side. Um, these beds drain out in about, I think it's about 45 seconds. Um, which works out quite well. I'm using a 32 mil uh, drainage on them as opposed to a 25 mil one inch line or a three quarter inch line. I find they're absolutely fantastic and flawless. And there's the outlet for the uh, bed one. That's our sump tank which is 575 liters. Full up it's about 500 liters right to the top when uh, it's full of water. And we had our pump in this line originally, in this sump tank, but because we moved over the floating raft bed a bit closer, it was a bit difficult to do maintenance on it. So I ran a secondary line from there, across into half of a 100 liter barrel, and run a 4,000 liter an hour pump, which runs directly up into a uh, one-way check valve. This way if I have any power outs or anything like that, I'm not affected by by the drainage of the tank and overflowing the sump tank and just causing a big mess. Into a, another sweeping 90. I prefer to use those. And this is a one inch line. That's recommended for for the pump size that I have. Uh, it's good enough flow but still has enough speed to move move anything that's uh, in the line. If there is any solids I don't want to have any build up or of gunk and whatnot. Got a main shutoff valve for the pump back this way and this runs into one of our uh, Casa Aquaponics uh, custom made Venturi's. Absolutely fantastic and uh, this runs directly into our fish tank with our airline right here and I made the airline about uh, well obviously way too long but I made it about three and a half feet this way I don't have any uh, noise issues so I'll make it as quiet as possible and you can see in here the air the air quality that I'm getting from that Venturi it's absolutely fantastic I will be doing a video on how to how to make these uh, venturis they are a bit tricky to get uh, to get right the first time but uh, if not they are available for sale really really cheap essentially just the cost of the material and some shipping and uh, we do ship worldwide but let me show you the difference here I'll uh, just turn off the air and you can see there we go with the air off and you should be able to see the outlet there and then I'll turn it back on. I mean, it's just fantastic flow. Uh, great small bubbles as opposed to the large, uh, large gurgling bubbles. And uh, you can see the current across. That's just brilliant. These fish are uh, really happy. That's pretty much our only air supply for the fish tank. In fact, that is the only air supply for the fish tank. And uh, the fish seem quite happy. And then that's it really, uh, fish tank all through the system and back to the fish tank again. But that's it guys, I hope you, uh, hope you liked the video, 
It, uh, it seems to work really well for us using a gravity fed system as opposed to splitting the pump between the fish tank and the grow beds. It, uh, I, I find it's a much better situation. This way the fish have a lot higher rate of flow and water turnover and cleaner water. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it and look forward to any comments, questions or suggestions. Just put them in the drop box down below and uh, have yourself a great day.